seem to be a kind of interrogation of the idea of stardom itself, a kind of a, a knowing, sort of removed, almost commentary on stardom, which he achieved and, and which he enacted through becoming a star in his own right. And he continued that throughout his work. And even at the end, he was still kind of teasing us and lying to us because if that's all he ever really meant, and if that's all he was ever really about, we wouldn't be here still talking about him and still so fascinated by him. Uh, and we will continue to be so, I guess, for many, many, many years to come. So uh, thanks very much for turning up. Thanks to everybody at the uh, Bowie Festival for uh, accommodating us. Uh, thanks to everybody here at the Wine Dessert Beautiful Bookshop. Uh, as Owen said, I agree that Aileen Delan may say a few words. Thank you. Sometimes I feel like a little bit of a fraud when it comes to the work I do with Owen and Martin because um, I possibly don't have the same level of fandom that they do. Um, I'm very admiring of Bowie and I become increasingly more so. And I suppose one of my, my uh, earliest memories is of hearing Space Oddity and being absolutely distraught by it. So he did have a profound impact on me as a child. But uh, what I've come to really, really, truly appreciate with David Bowie is the manner in which he bridges what people c call that uh, space between high and low culture. They're not terms that I agree with, actually. I think they're very problematic. But as a musicologist, as somebody who teaches in university, I think you can take somebody like David Bowie and use it as a way to teach people about Arnold Schoenberg and the second being his school, because he was massively influenced. Bowie was massively influenced by him. Everything from Ashes to Ashes, Piero, things we talk about in the book. I also think this idea of um, what it means to be an avant-garde or what it means to kind of become canonic, these terms are really important for students to, to learn about. And so you can do it with music like this. And uh, if you look at Bowie's whole oeuvre, he was so, so conscious of his performativity and of all the different thematic ideas he brought together. And so he could engage with people at so many different levels. And so as a project for me, you know, it's not just about Bowie itself, it's about all of the other elements that you allow him to open up to students, to the universe of students. But it's also about working with two people. Unfortunately, as Owen said, Martin Power could be here. What a man. Martin Power is amazing. He's the quiet man behind this book in so many ways, isn't he, Owen? Um, because what it takes to make something like this happen is not just you know, huge appreciation and fandom for somebody. It takes a lot of um, hard work. It takes bringing together extraordinary contributors in this book, all who have become friends now, I would say, very much so from across the globe, from UCLA, from different parts of Europe, North America, Canada, Australia, um, our, our, one of our contributors actually created those dolls um, in Brisbane, from Brisbane. So we've had this incredible, incredible privilege through Bowie of having all of these kinds of uh, new friendships and engagements. And um, I was listening to Black Star as I was coming up today, and it's a symphony. It really, really is. Mm. It is just so worthy of deconstruction. There's mm. Sunra Afrofuturism going on in there. There's a load of other things we haven't even tapped in yet, mm. which we'll do yes. in the next ah. thing that we'll write about. <laughs> so um, thank you all again for coming. Um, we raise our glass to Martin Power, please, if you have a glass, uh, because he is the absent friend here. And I uh, hope you enjoy the book if you choose to buy it. Thanks so much. I just want to, my name is John.